All right, so as you progress to more advanced projects with JavaScript, you may find that the P5.js online editor just is not working uh, as well as maybe it could for you. It's a really awesome tool for quickly prototyping, for jumping in and writing code without having to do anything else. Um, you can share your projects really easily, but it does have some limitations. Um, the ones that come to mind for me are um, that you have to have your sketch and your code in the same window. So it's really hard to prototype stuff that's really big or changes size. Um, there's file upload limits. So if you're working with a lot of media, you're limited that way. Um, and you have to have an internet connection. You have to be online to be able to write code. Um, plus a lot of other things that just really make transitioning to an editor um, on your computer, it really makes sense. Um, getting that set up can be super simple, but you're gonna run into some problems pretty quickly. Um, and so I'm gonna show you how to get set up to use an external editor on your computer in a way that hopefully avoids um, a lot of those kinds of problems. Um, I have written a, or I have a written tutorial for this and I'll put the link in the description for the video. Um, that's what's on the screen right now. Um, so if it's easier for you to follow along step-by-step step that way, you can certainly just dive into that. Um, and it has links to all the things that we're talking about here. Uh, but I thought maybe it would be helpful just to put together a video as well, showing you the steps that you would need to go through to work with an editor on your computer. Okay, so the first thing that you're gonna need is um, some place to write your code. And for that, we need a text editor. Um, so you could use um, text edit or notepad on your computer, but those are so simple and they're not really meant for writing code. Um, you're gonna be frustrated really quickly. On the other end of the spectrum are tools like Visual Studio, which are massive development environments. They have tons of tools and options and stuff, but it can be uh, challenging to get started and, and kind of just navigate your way through a tool like that. Um, in the middle, kind of between those two options are things like Sublime Text, which I really love. Um, this is what I use for um, most of my programming. Um, Sublime is free. Um, there's a really great community around it. Um, you will get <laughs> sometimes prompted to pay for Sublime. Um, you can, uh, I don't think there's any features that are locked out, but you will periodically get that prompt, but you don't have to pay. Um, and yeah, I really like Sublime. Another option that I hear good things about, I haven't used this, um, is Brackets. This is um, also free. It's also open source. So if that's something that's important to you, then this is maybe a good choice. Um, it is made by Adobe. So, um, you know, that goes with a whole bunch of other things. Um, but I think those are two good options if you're just getting started. Um, so here is what Sublime looks like. Um, you can see here my sketch and some of the things just out of the, you know, straight out of the gate that it does that are, I think, much nicer than the online editor. You can see it does syntax highlighting like before, it's got line numbers, um, but we also have the ability to open multiple tabs. So I can have a whole bunch of different files open at the same time. Um, you can do color themes, so you can sort of style it in a way that works best for you. I really like this dark theme, it's much easier on my eyes. Um, and we'll see later too, there's a lot of other functionality that Sublime can do that's um, that's really nice. It's also super customizable. So if you're into that kind of thing, um, you can open your settings and um, you can really create your own kind of like personal profile to work exactly how you want it to do. Font size, tab size, but there's so many options that you can add um, from here. And they're really nicely annotated so you know kind of what you're doing. But you don't need to do any of that if all you want to do is write some code. Um, so once you've downloaded and installed a text editor, the next thing that you're going to need, um, well, we're going to need a way of connecting our code to the web browser. And we could just open the sketch directly in the browser, and that totally works. But you're going to find very quickly um, some problems, specifically if you try to load other files from your computer, like images or sounds. You're going to get this cross-origin error. Um, we'll talk in the end a little bit about more about what that means. Um, but we need a, a way then of getting around some of that stuff. Um, and the tool that we're going to use for that is something called Browser Sync. Um, but before, so we have to go through a few steps to be able to install Browser Sync on our computer. Um, the first thing you need to do, and you only need to do this once, and then you're then you're all good. 
Uh, the first thing we need to do is install this tool called Node, also called Node.js. Um, Node is um, an environment for writing apps and websites using JavaScript. It's really powerful and really cool. Um, it's out of the scope here for us to really talk too much about what the details are, but it's used to build sites like eBay and um, Netflix, which is kind of incredible. Um, but we really, we're not gonna use Node. We just want Node for this tool that comes with it called NPM or Node Package Manager. Um, so you can go to this link. The link is in the tutorial. Um, download and install this for your operating system. It will install just like a regular app. And um, when we're done with that, then we need to test to see if um, NPM, Node Package Manager, was installed. So in order to do that, I'm going to go to my um, terminal which if you're on a Mac, that's under Applications, Utilities, Terminal, um, or you could do a Spotlight Search, open it. I would recommend putting it in your doc so that you have easy access to it all the time. Uh, on Windows, you can search for Command Prompt and you'll find it. Now, I have to admit, I don't, I haven't used Windows in many years, so I'm hopefully giving you the right info. If you're a Windows, Windows user, if you're not, please yell at me and let me know what, what I got wrong. Um, Okay, so to test if Node uh, Package Manager has been installed, we just type the command npm and hit return. And you should get some text that looks like this. This is a good news. This um, is telling us that the command has been installed and it gives us some instructions on how to use it. Now, if you haven't used the command line before or very little, that you should be okay. Most of what we're doing is really, really simple. But if you really have never touched it before, you might want to just take a pause for a second and go um, look at some tutorials or something that kind of give you an overview, just so you're a little more familiar. But really what we're doing here is pretty simple. Um, so with NPM installed, now we're ready to install Browser Sync, the tool we were really after in the first place. Um, and the command for that, oh, so what's a package? A package is um, like a code library or an additional tool that extends the functionality of something on your computer. Um, other systems like PIP and Homebrew exist for other programming languages. NPM is the one for Node. Um, so we type NPM install. We want to add this dash g argument. This installs it for every part of our computer. Um, if you know that's not how you want to do it, you probably also don't need my help installing these tools. Um, and then we type the name browsers dash sync and hit return. And you're going to get this little animated text going by that shows you it's being downloaded and installed. And this is it's telling us everything went right, which is good. And then we can just double check that by typing browser dash sync. And just like with NPM, we get the same message explaining how to use this tool. And this verifies for us that it's installed correctly, which is great. Um, if you run into an issue with any of these uh, steps in the command line, you, first thing to do is double check you spelled everything right, that there's no you know, typos in there. Okay, so we've got browser sync installed, which is great. The next thing we need is um, the sort of template for P5.js um, that we can work with. And one way you could do this is to create a blank sketch in the uh, P5.js editor, save it and download it to your computer. But I've included a link in the, um, in the tutorial here, if we jump down to here, um, I've zipped together all those files for you already. Um, my suggestion would be to save that to your computer and keep it as a template. Don't change it, just copy it every time you want to make a new sketch. And then that way you have it kind of easily accessible on your computer. Um, so you'll see in this blank sketch that there are um, five different files here. And these are all, well, with the exception of the sound uh, library, these are all required to make your sketch work. So don't delete them. Um, you do need them and don't rename them because you'll run into some issues as well. Um, but let's take a quick look and see what's in here. So the first is sketch.js. Um, and if you know, you've know you used P5.js, so you know this is really where our work mostly happens, is where you write your, your main sketch. Um, Index.html is the web page that actually holds and displays your sketch on the screen. Um, so we do need this, and this is where our sketch gets loaded. This is also where you would add additional JavaScript files and stuff like that. Um, there's also a style.css uh, file. This is very simple and it's styling um, elements on the page. 
really just the canvas and making sure it, you know, this place kind of the way we expect it to. If you haven't done any web design before, you don't really need to touch this stuff, but you certainly can add to both the index and the style um, page if you want to. And then, of course, we have p5.js. This is the actual library itself. Um, you can see it's JavaScript. And then um, p5.sound. Now, this is a minimized version of that, so it's all been stretched onto one line. Um, you don't need to, um, if you're not using sound, you don't need this file, so you could delete it, but it's pretty small and um, it's not a big deal. Okay, cool. So we've got that set up. I think we're ready to start writing some code. I'm going to open my web browser here. We'll just put this guy over here. Um, and so, you know, this is kind of how I would set it up normally. I would have my browser open and I would have my code editor open. Um, now I'm, uh, you can't see it, but I'm on two monitors here. So I really like setting it up that way. So I have lots of room to spread out and I'll often have another window, um, web browser window open with like reference and stuff like that. Cause you're always looking stuff up. Um, so now we need to use browser sync to connect these two and this will allow us to um, see the results. So I'm gonna have open my terminal and my sketch folder. And the first thing that we need to do is move in our terminal from um, where it's currently to the folder where we're working. And to do that, the command is CD or change directory. And I think this should be the same on Windows and Mac, I hope, um, and Linux for sure. Um, and then the easiest way is to just drag the folder into the terminal window. And you'll see it paste that whole long path. That's the um, directions or the address to that folder on our computer. And then you can just hit return. And then we can verify we're in the right place. I mean, I can see here, it's got the name of my folder, but if I wanna see what files are in there, I can type ls list files, and I can see my index p5.js, sketch.js, all that stuff is here which is great. Um, if you accidentally drag one of your files in, you'll notice it adds you know, the full file name here. If I hit return, I'm gonna get an error. It says it's not a directory. It's not a folder because it's a file. Um, but the easiest thing to do there would just be to, oops, um, dang it, I screwed that up. Anyway, if I drag this in, here we go. And I could just delete the file the file name at the end there and hit return. And now I'm in the correct folder. Um, I'm clearing the screen with a keyboard shortcut for Mac. I'm sorry, Windows, I don't know. Um, Command K, um, which is kind of nice, but we're really not gonna need that here. Okay, we're in our folder. Now we can run browser sync. So the command is browser sync. We wanna say start, which is gonna uh, initialize everything. We're gonna add two extra arguments in the command line. These are often given with dashes. So I can say dash s, which creates a server. And essentially that's what we're doing. We're creating a local web server on our computer that's gonna allow our project to load just like if it was online. And w, which says to watch files. And this is one of the really awesome things about browser sync. When I save my file, any of the files in my project, it's gonna automatically refresh in the browser and I don't have to go back and forth and refresh every time. Um, so you can do them separately but we can also combine them just like this and then hit return. And a couple of things happen. First, you'll notice it opens my browser and I could see my little sketch there, which is awesome. And it shows me this text over here. This is a good sign, it's running. Um, and you'll notice I don't have my prompt back where I type in text. And that's because this is a program now that's running in, um, in my terminal. When I'm done working for the day and I wanna stop browser sync, you hit control C on the keyboard and that's gonna quit and bring you back to the command line. If I try to quit without that, it's gonna um, hopefully pop up a nice warning for you that says, hey, there's something going on in the browser, in the terminal, do you wanna quit? And then you can quit it that way. But command C, or sorry, control C is a really good command to get used to because when you're using the terminal, you use that a lot. Um, if I run this, oh, and another really useful tip, if you hit the up arrow on your keyboard, it'll walk through the previous commands that you've done. So this is a really quick way to go back and rerun the same command and just hit return. Now it's gonna open a new uh, window, or sorry, a new tab, but that's okay. All right, so I can then go into my editor here. And if I change something like 
the background color, save it, you'll notice automatically changes over here and we get to be able to see the changes. This is super, super awesome. Um, really easy to use because it connects these two things. It makes it really quick to develop. Um, one other bonus here that's pretty cool. If I open back up my terminal, you can see here. Oh, so actually, before we talk about that, um, I think a, a good question to ask is, what is localhost? Like, what does this thing mean here? This is a really weird address in the address bar. Um, localhost is essentially your own computer. It's like the address to your own computer. Um, 3000 is the port that it connects. We don't need to get into the details of that. Um, but essentially localhost is what allows us then to um, kind of connect to files on our computer. But if I'm working on a mobile device, let's say I want to prototype on my phone too, because P5.js sketches really are just um, web pages. So you can see them on mobile devices. Um, Browser sync is really awesome for this. You don't want to do localhost because that is your computer. So to your phone, that's your phone, not your computer where your files are. But this IP address here will take you to the same place and um, it will also sync in the same way. So if I make a change to my um, sketch on my computer, it will refresh on my phone. It's super awesome. Now there's one limitation here, and that is that we can't see console output from the phone on your computer. Um, and sadly, Safari has no console. So there's really no way to um, see if there's errors and stuff going on. So one of the workarounds, this is really frustrating, but one of the workarounds I use is I use the text command in P5.js to print stuff on the screen, essentially making my own console, um, which is something that you could do. So um, cool. I'm trying to think if there's anything else that we should talk about. Browser Sync is a really powerful, awesome tool. It does have um, a whole bunch of other options that you can um, take a look at. So if you look down, I have a link somewhere. Anyway, you can follow the link and read more about Browser Sync. I don't think you're going to need any more settings, um, with one exception. I do really like um, adding, let's see, I thought it was here, but um, I like adding, don't forget Control C when you're done. Um, oh, I don't remember what the command is. Anyway, it's in the tutorial. There's a command that will show you how to turn off the little pop up that comes every time it refreshes, um, if that bothers you visually. And then there was one other thing. So we were talking in the beginning about cross-origin error. Um, and this is something that happens if you try to load um, files that are coming from to your browser's view uh, from a different place. And they've gotten more tight about this. Um, they're trying to protect your privacy online and your safety online. Um, but it's gotten much more strict recently and includes files on your own computer. So if you're trying to load a file, um, even in the same folder as your sketch, it's going to give you this error, and it's really hard to figure out what's going on. Browser Sync solves that problem. So yes, we for sure could open that index page directly in your browser, and you'd be able to run basic JavaScript. But the minute you try to use um, any kind of media or extra fonts, you're going to run into problems. And Browser Sync, yes, it's kind of a pain to get set up, if you, especially if you're not used to the command line. But it just makes your life so much easier. And um, now every time, all you have to do, go to your folder, run browser sync, and you're ready to go.